Hello, my name is Michael and uh, I'm the development manager at Moodle HQ. I also act as the Scrum Master and uh, I'm going to be talking about Agile and Scrum at Moodle HQ. Um, Scrum is an Agile framework that we use at Moodle HQ. I'm not going to go into uh, the, the details of it too much, assuming that you know something about Agile development, but uh, in, in short, it's a, a way that we can organize uh, issues into workable chunks that we can uh, you know, work on over a few weeks and, uh, and continue development over a, a longer period of time in a way that, that gets things done. Um, I'll give you a rundown of how we do it at Moodle HQ. And uh, we start by uh, gathering together issues that are in a, a list that we call a backlog, and each of those issues is, is ranked. So each of them has a, a certain priority and they've been ordered. Um, so we pick off you know, the, the highest ranked issues uh, to start off with the, at the Scrum. Uh, and to choose which issues we will we'll take, it's a matter of not sort of choosing you know, which ones we want to work on, but more so uh, by, by determining how much work we can actually uh, do. Uh, and in order to do that, we have to estimate the scale of each issue. And we use planning poker, uh, which is a, a, a mechanism for estimating the scale of each issue. Uh, we apply that to, to each issue and we, we do that until we think we've got enough issues to draw in for uh, what we call the sprint backlog, which is um, a shorter list of work that we're going to work on for uh, a three week sprint. Uh, so the length of our sprints here at the moment is three weeks. Um, so uh, the way that we go about doing that is um, we have a, a daily scrum, which is about 15 minutes, and in between, obviously, the developers are working on the issues in that sprint backlog in, in ranked order uh, and trying to complete all of them. Um, at the end of the three-week sprint, we have uh, a meeting which consists of a review, so looking at the, the backlog and which issues were completed and which ones weren't. Uh, we also have uh, what we call a retrospective meeting, which is a reflection on, on the activities that the team undertook and coming up with ways that we can do it better next time uh, or in the future. Um, this usually takes about uh, an hour. Some organisations take longer to do it uh, than that, but we found that um, as the team matures, uh, that sort of settles down um, and uh, we tend to be doing it for about an hour uh, at the end of that three-week sprint. Um, left over at the end, we have some issues um, that, that weren't complete. Um, ideally, this is none, uh, but usually there's a small number that haven't been completed uh, the reasons for that can be that we're waiting for some sort of communication um, with some member of the community um, because we're an open source project, this, this sometimes happens, um, or issues are waiting for other issues to be completed before, um, before they can be completed. Also, the ret retrospective also hopefully delivers a certain amount of wisdom uh, that the team can carry forward and allow them to improve the way that they, they do their work. I'm going to go into some of these uh, parts then in a bit more detail and show some images of, of examples of how we do it. Um, starting off with the planning, um, we do a lot of stuff online because the team is not co-located. We have a, a lot of developers in Perth, Australia, but uh, we have other developers working for Moodle HQ uh, elsewhere around the world. Um, we tend to do a lot of stuff online, so we don't use uh, physical cards like a lot of organisations. Instead, we, we do a lot of it um, using uh, a tracking system online, and our planning is no different. Um, we have a backlog, and uh, we, we shuffle the issues in and out of the, the, from the from the main backlog into the sprint backlog until it constitutes the size that we, we're looking for. Um, in order to estimate, um, I mentioned planning poker, and this sort of sounds like a bit of a game, and it plays a bit like a game as well, but it's actually a useful mechanism for coming to consensus. Um, so as we go through each issue, uh, each member of the team will estimate um, a value in points uh, for that issue, and um, each person puts down a card at the same time. Um, if the cards differ, which is usually the case initially, 
uh, each person at the extremes uh, gets an opportunity to talk to their opinion and uh, to explain why they thought it was one way or the other. And eventually, things tend to um, come to a consensus. Uh, and then you know, we take that value then as the, the value of the, um, the issue and the sum of those um, goes together to, to form the, the, the entire sort of sum of the, the issues in the sprint backlog. Um, the team tends to get better at doing this as time goes on and they, they tend to get better at estimating how much work they can do within a, a sprint as well. Um, once the, the sprint backlog is, is established and uh, the daily scrum is undertaken, uh, we use another sort of customised uh, dashboard to keep track of the issues that are being worked on as well as um, you know the various states that they're in and trying to support each person in the team so there'll be collaboration within the team making sure that all the issues are, are completed before the end of the sprint. Um, as I mentioned, the, the team is not uh, entirely co-located so we can't have what's called a stand-up meeting in the same way that other sort of organisations can. Instead we use um, you know online mechanisms to meet and to discuss the you know the issues and try and keep this to the same sort of scale of 15 minutes um, per day. Now um, within that uh, each of the issues is worked on by developers and it usually follows a certain pattern um, starting off with trying to replicate uh, the problem or research if it's a if it's a piece of new code to research um, what needs to be done for it. Uh, this then moves on into sort of a development phase so there's test writing and code writing and so on that goes on um, and then eventually uh, when the developer or developers are happy with the solution they can pass it on to other developers for a peer review uh, and there might be a bit of back and forth there until it's considered ready for integration. Uh, it's then handed over to another team. We have a, an integration team here at Moodle um, and then they go through a, a, you know, another review of the code. This is a very strict review um, and once that's done uh, it's integrated into a, you know, a temporary version, an integration version, uh, waiting for testing and once it's then tested it's, it's approved and it becomes sort of a released change. Now, as far as the, um, the team of developers is concerned, they have to mark a point where they consider their work done. Um, we've defined this as uh, when it moves on from uh, sort of development and peer review into integration, sort of basically when the team hands it over from themselves to the integration team. Uh, we have played with this boundary a bit in the past, but we found that this is the most accurate reflection uh, of, of um, the definition of done, if you like. Um, there are some issues that do come back from, from integration and need to be reworked, but usually this is a very small percentage and the amount of work needed to, to get it back into integration is small. Um, uh, we, we did previously have it, uh, the definition of done later on, but that left a lot of issues in the backlog uh, lingering for a long, long time um, and that was really an accurate reflection of the, the team's work. So this seems to be working for us at the moment. Um, Moodle as an organisation being uh, open source and being a continuous project is slightly different to what you might find in an ordinary development project and I don't know if there are any ordinary development projects out there but you know often I think of maybe uh, some banking software or something like that which has an end product um, that, that is delivered and sold or something like that. Um, but I'm just going to sort of try and contrast Moodle to that. Uh, starting off with the fact that yeah, Moodle is open source um, that means that it's rather than sort of developing for dollars, uh, you know, working for money, uh, instead uh, Moodle is, is serving a community, a community of users. Um, so people can't uh, come across and say this needs to be done and pay a bit of money and make sure it happens. Instead, uh, the decisions are made uh, in relation to the whole community and the benefit to those, those people. Um, the roles here at Moodle HQ are slightly different because we, I mean, we, we try and fit in with the, the normal Scrum roles and I'll explain this in a bit, bit more in a minute, but um, we have to keep in mind the whole community as well. Um, there are also outside developers contributing. What I'm talking about mostly is the development that goes on here at Moodle HQ. But we're also working with other developers in the community as well. 
um, and I'll explain how that works in a minute. Moodle isn't uh, uh, something that gets finished and handed over and you know, released and forgotten. Um, Moodle is a continuous project. Um, we're continuously working to make Moodle better. Uh, and, and that means that there is stable development, fixing of, of existing code, with bugs and improvements, and also uh, new development as well to add new features and to replace um, features with you know, uh, new code. Um, we also, instead of like you know handing over a product and then forgetting about it, we have cycles of development. So we have sort of various levels of release, and uh, we try and work towards those in a continuous fashion. So I'll explain each of these bits in a bit more detail now. Uh, firstly, the roles. Um, so uh, the person who fulfills. Uh, the product owner role is, is Martin Dugiamis. Uh, he is the founder of Moodle and still the lead developer. Um, he sort of acts as that product owner. Um, when there is a, a serious decision to be made um, and the community itself you know, seems to be in a bit of a stalemate, he'll often step in and make that decision. But at the same time, I mean, he is representing um, the, the, the many uh, desires and uh, opinions of the entire community and there's many thousands, more, many more than, than the pictures show here, uh, many thousands of people in that community. Um, some are developers and some are users and some are administrators and they're all people who have an interest in Moodle in a different way. Um, I act as the scrum master so uh, that means that I'm sort of the the coach of the developers and also uh, sort of a bridge between the product owner and the community and uh, the developers. Um, I also act as sort of a protector for the developers so that when we have a, a sprint backlog that it is not being influenced unduly um, by people's desires. Um, and uh, we have two teams of developers uh, here at Moodle HQ. Uh, one team that tends to focus on front end um, related issues, interface and, and so on and activities and one that uh, one team that focuses on uh, the back end of Moodle um, and they both have independent uh, backlogs uh, and they'll both have independent sprints as well uh, but they both have daily scrum meetings and so on. Um, we get contributions to Moodle code from lots of different places. Um, the majority of commits are made here at Moodle HQ, so it's about two thirds of the, the code is written um, by, by Moodle HQ. Um, but we also get um, contributions from Moodle partners. These are organisations that work with Moodle and uh, they also offer services like uh, hosting, um, customization, uh, training, support, uh, consultation, those sorts of things. Uh, and they're very important to the Moodle project as a whole. Um, there are also obviously large institutions using Moodle and many of these have development teams and uh, they are also contributing code back to Moodle as well. Some of them are responsible for large chunks of code, uh, others are just making you know, bug fixes and so on and, and contributing those back to Moodle. Uh, and then of course we have um, individual contributors, people who are interested in Moodle uh, and want to, to make a, a contribution, make a change to Moodle and share that you know, with the whole community. Uh, this is sort of in relation to the Moodle core product if you like, um, but we also have lots and lots of uh, contributed add-ons um, which you can download independently and use with Moodle and there's many hundreds of those as well. Now, as I said, uh, Moodle is a continuous project and we tend to work in cycles. Um, uh, the, the major releases happen six monthly and so this is sort of six month worth of, worth of weeks with uh, the week numbers sort of distributed there and that sort of numbering will become apparent in a minute. So if seeing this as a six monthly cycle, after a release, um, we will uh, start first off doing a bit of planning for the rest of the cycle. So if there are new features uh, that are desired, uh, there's a certain amount of design and prototyping and so on. Um, but because you know we've just had a release, um, there's also a need for ad hoc bug fixing. So if there's regressions that surface, we need to fix those uh, as soon as we can uh, and get them in. Um, after this period, uh, we go into sort of a regular uh, sprint pattern for a few sprints. Um, you'll see that we don't 
uh, you know, do sprints all of the time. Uh, that would probably get get a bit monotonous. But the sprints are when the developers really get their heads down and get stuck into it. Um, in between, we do uh, provide some breaks where the developers have an opportunity to to do some personal project work. Um, so this is sort of like a, a bit of time where they're not being directed to do to work, but they they can um, sort of consider what they want to do themselves. And through these sort of personal projects, we have come up with some great ideas for Moodle, and some of them have, have made their way back into Moodle as well. Um, and, and you'll probably find them here and there throughout. Um, at a certain point before the release, we call what's called a code freeze. And this means that no new code can be uh, sort of integrated from this point onwards until the release. Um, the reason for that is, is so that we don't uh, have untested code being uh, released in a major release. Following that, there's a, a period of quality assurance testing and, uh, and bug fixing uh, that might arise from that. So at the end of that six monthly cycle, we have a very sort of uh, solid product, something that we can reliably say that people can download and start using. Um, so this forms a, a larger picture. As I said, we have six monthly cycles. We have releases now in May and November uh, as our major release, and we promote those as, as widely as we can. But in essence, we are also making less releases all of the time. Um, every two months, we make what's called a minor release. Um, the major emphasis there is that there are fixes uh, to security problems. Uh, we want to make sure that we get those out and uh, emphasize those on a regular basis. And um, within that, you know, we're also making weekly releases, which are the sort of uh, binding together of issues that have been integrated over the last week. And if you're really uh, trying to keep up with the latest, you can actually get the, a new version of Moodle every week. Anyway, um, hopefully that explains the, the processes that we go through here and the way that we do agile development within uh, Moodle HQ uh, and hopefully that helps you understand uh, how development happens in Moodle.